Thank you. Continuous delivery on Kubernetes. Who here is using CI? I'm so glad to see so many hands. Um, you'll be surprised that people don't use CI. <laughs> um, so I have an app. Uh, a friend of mine called Sean Meem wanted a place where he could store photos. So I decided to do that for him. And of course, I put it up on a Kubernetes cluster because you know he's crazy about HA and all that good stuff. Um, so if you go to bit.ly slash Sean Meme, you'll find my awesome app. Hopefully, if the <laughs> bit.ly works properly. Here it is up here. Um, feel free to add a photo to it. Um, but uh, because it's so popular, what I want to do is uh, automatically deploy this app when I make some changes. So. Of course, I need CI CD for that. And when I make some changes to code, I want to run any unit and functional tests that I have. And even for PRs, it's, it's an open source um, application. So when someone forks my code and makes a change and sends me a PR, um, awesome. I want to run tests for that as well. And I want to automatically build and push images. So I'm using Docker. So I want to build those images, push them out to, uh, to the Docker registry. Um, and then I want to roll out that new version. So this is the kind of pipeline that I'm, I'm looking for. So there'll be some code and config change, which triggers uh, a build. Uh, that build will have some tests. It will go and push a Docker image out there. And then we'll get to a staging and QA deployment. And at this point, I really want to make sure that everything works OK before I, I give the OK and, and roll out to, to production. For the demo, I'm using GitHub to store my code. Um, I have a Jenkins setup that will go and do my CI stuff. And I'm also using Kubernetes and Helm uh, to go and do that deployment part. Uh, and and there's, some, there's a bit of overlap here, because obviously Jenkins is, is running the commands to, to do my uh, deployment. The manual verification part, um, you'll, you'll see how it looks in, uh, in Jenkins, but um, this is something that you can, you can do pretty easily with different CIs. If you're using Circle or uh, Travis, you can, uh, you can uh, have a, a filter for a particular branch or a tag. Um, there are different ways of doing that. So here's my repository. Um, again, it's open source. Uh, something to note here is I have uh, my Helm chart in here, I have a Docker file, and I have a Jenkins file in here. So everything, every all the configuration that I use to deploy this application is all in this single repository. So if you've used Kubernetes before or looked at it, you'll probably see one of these. It's a Kubernetes resource. Um, Basically, this is, this is just a deployment to run a single container, which is my, my application container. Um, and it has a single port and a, uh, a health check. And in my C CI, I'd probably do something like this. I'll have a kubectl apply-f manifest. And manifest is the folder uh, where I have my, my YAML files. And, and this works. Uh, the kube, kubectl command will go and find each YAML file and go and deploy that out to my cluster. That will end up in uh, a rolling upgrade. And this is how your pods feel when you go and kill them. Stop doing that. Actually, no, keep doing that. That's, don't stop doing that. Um, but there is one problem. I've just gone and built an image in my CI. But my manifest here still has uh, my old image. Uh, it still has the v100. So if I go and update that image, how do I go and update that manifest to point to the new image I've built and pushed out? Well, you might see something like this in your CI, um, a nasty little sed command that uh, just goes and swaps out that image tag to the one that I've just built using an environment variable. And fair enough, it works. You know, it does the job. But I think Paul touched on this earlier. Um, as your Kubernetes manifests and your applications get uh, more and more complex, this kind of thing becomes harder to do. Um, as an example, if you, uh, if you need to run a specific uh, job just before your application rolls out, like a database migration, that becomes pretty hard to do. You need to create a job and write a script so that that job gets run at a specific time before your de deployment. Um, 
So this is where Helm comes out. Um, hands up if anyone's heard of Helm or is using it. Awesome. That's quite a lot of people, which is great. Um, I feel like the number of people that put their hands up after uh, when I asked that question always uh, increases. So that's, that's really awesome. So for those who don't know much about Helm, um, I will give a quick introduction on that, a quick whirlwind, whirlwind tour. Um, so it's an easier way to share and manage manifests. So what happens is that all your Kubernetes manifests, the service, deployment, secret, whatever, um, you package that all up into a single chart or a single package. And it gives you a way to tweak different uh, variables during your deployment if you, if, you, if you need something specific in different environments. And it also allows you to, to manage the lifecycle of your application using hooks. Um, so, this, so what I was talking about earlier with the database migration, you could do that with a, with a, a post install hook to, uh, to run a job after, uh, after you've installed your chart. I mentioned the word charts. Charts are application definitions. They consist of metadata, definitions, config, and documentation. These things live in chart repositories, which basically are just HTTP servers that serve an index.yaml file that has the list of all the charts in the repository um, and the links to the tarballs uh, so that the Helm command can go and get them. And this is briefly what a chart looks like. It has a, um, a folder called templates, which is where most of your YAML files um, live. It uses the Go template rendering engine to do uh, value substitution. So there's a, there's, there's a helpers file that you can write helpers for, and there's a, also a notes.txt file, which I'll show you um, in a second. And that basically is a place where you can document your chart and, and tell people what to do next once they've installed it. This is how Helm interacts with your cluster. So when you go and install Helm, uh, you'll run a command called Helm init. And what I'll do is I'll install the tiller component inside your cluster. And a Helm client that sits on your machine will talk to tiller inside your cluster uh, via port forward over gRPC. And then Tiller will go and just talk to the Kubernetes cluster it's running in and manage all your resources for you. Um, order state, again, again is uh, stored in a config map. So it's all using Kubernetes as a, as a backend for, uh, for the state. So with Helm, you go, through, you go from a kubectl apply or kubectl create to a Helm install. And that's just one command that installs everything that your app needs. And in this example as well, I'm able to set the image tag in that same command and have that used in my, uh, in my resources. Another nice thing about Helm is that you can pick from a library of applications. So if you go to kubeapps.com, um, seek locate deploy, by the way, is a Doctor Who joke. This one's for you, Paul. It's not a good joke if you have to explain it, is it? <laughs> so kubeapps.com, um, this basically fronts the uh, Kubernetes charts repo, which is a stable and incubated charts um, repositories, which are available on GitHub. And you can kind of see there's a range of different applications um, contributed from, from the community. I've installed Jenkins on my cluster, and I use this chart. And I can just run this command in Helm to go and install that. There's different versions I can use. I get some documentation here. And if I go down to the source repository here, this just links back to the source of that Jenkins chart, which is in the Kubernetes chart repo. Only 1,000 stars. Um, so going back here. All right, demo. OK. So I have my Jenkins. And if you're looking at this and thinking, whoa, when did Jenkins get that cool? Um, this is the Blue Ocean plugin, plugin, which is the new user interface for <laughs> Jenkins, um, kind of taking from Travis and Circle, I guess, and making it look all snazzy. Um, so here are some previous builds. Some I've had to bought. Other ones have, have been good. Uh, and in my repository here, what I'm going to do 
is, I'm going to make a change. So going back to my site, let's see if someone, anyone's, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should say, I, I wrote this really quickly yesterday. So if you're trying to, like, SQL inject or, well, there's no, there's no SQL database, so that, that would be pointless anyway. Um, but there might be some bugs, so please don't, please don't break it. Um, <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is, right now I can only create a single meme, and we all know there's more Sean Bean memes to make, so we'll add an extra one. And also, this site is being served over HTTP, so I definitely want to change that to make it more secure. So what we're going to do is, can everybody see this? Make this bigger. Can everyone at the back see this? Cool. So I'll open up Vim here. And I should probably do a, oops. Apparently I can't exit Vim. Just do a quick git pull here to make sure. Up to date, there we go. So we'll go into my Helm chart here. As you can see, it's got the same kind of layout, uh, different resources. And I mentioned that you can pass in some configuration, and there was a dash dash set command to do this. Uh, this is the values.yaml file, which is another way of passing configuration. Um, basically, uses this, the same values as the dash dash set command, but you can specify it in a file and then pass it to, uh, to the term install command. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and enable TLS here. and. That's just going to work. There's some more magic to that, but I'll, I'll show you that later. Um, oh, also, I'm going to go to my index file here. And we'll enable the other Sean Bean meme. And we'll create a new branch here. I'll call it version 2. Push that out and create a pull request while we're at it. So if I now go to this pull request, eventually we'll see that Jenkins will pick this up, hopefully. So yesterday there were some delays with webhook deliveries, which I was experiencing and I was a little bit concerned that that was going to happen due to the talk, but hopefully, let's get it back to Jenkins here. And maybe it has. Let's see. The demo gods are not with me today. Live debugging, here we go. Oh, crap, I need the password. Uh, right, let's just... Okay, what we'll do is we'll skip over this. Uh, what I'll do, actually, what I'll do is I'll show you a previous one. Um, so what happens when I have a pull request that I want to test is um, I just want to build an image and test it. I don't want to actually push it out to um, staging or production. Um, so what, what I have here is I have my Jenkins pipeline um, that will go and build the image, test it, um, and then skip over all the rest of the steps and just go to the end here. Um, so just look at the build step here. Um, basically just building my, my Golang server um, as a Docker image and then um, test actually doesn't do anything yet. Uh, so we'll go ahead and merge this. And maybe Jenkins will pick this one up. Oh, it did, funny enough. There we go. OK, so this time I am going to push this out. And it's doing the build. Uh, 
Now it's actually pushing this out to my Docker repository. I'll go through the, the, the pipeline script a little bit later. Um, and so here, what, what it's done is it's, it's installed Helm um, and it's going to uh, deploy it for me with Helm. So it's, it's doing a Helm, Helm upgrade. Uh, and you can see it's setting the image tag that I just pushed out. I don't know if you can see that. I think a little bit bigger. Uh, and it's setting the, the host name for my staging environment. So if I go to the staging environment now, wow. <laughs> Uh, so what we should see is if we go to security here, there we go. So I fetched a certificate from uh, a Let's, en Let's Encrypt and that's what that um, TLS true did. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome, this is great. <laughs> Well, so you can actually create, if you go to the staging environment, you can create uh, one does not simply. So let's roll this out to production now. Uh, we'll actually test it here first. <laughs> Works? Cool, so let's roll this out to production. Uh, so in Jenkins, I, can, I have this awesome, do you want to deploy to production prompt? I'll click proceed and it'll continue with that build. And it does the same thing here that it does with the staging environment. Um, it just changes the environment variable to point to my uh, my production namespace here. <coughs> and that's gone and finished. So eventually, okay, this clearly isn't HA yet. There we go. One does not simply cube cut on fly. But one does simply helm install, am I right? Cool, so that's a demo. Um, this is the GIF I had for if things failed, and they almost did, but this is the GIF I had for, for things that went well. Um, so let's have a look at the, some of those pipeline steps. Um, so here I have the build step, um, very basic, just check out the, the Git repo and then um, do a Docker build with the image name and the build ID, and then when I'm pushing that image, um, again, I only want to do this when I am actually, uh, I actually want to deploy this to uh, staging or production. So I only do this when something has been merged to master. Um, I could even look at a different branch uh, or, or, or for a tag, um, but in this case, I'm looking at uh, master builds. And then I'm getting my credentials from Jenkins and doing a Docker login and Docker push. And in the staging deployment, um, basically just calls out to Helm to do a Helm, uh, to install Helm and, and do the, the Helm in it. And then I'll do a Helm upgrade, which is like the Helm install command, um, but it up upgrades an existing release. Um, and I can actually show you, if I go back to my terminal here and run Helm list. So I guess I need to make that a bit smaller. That was not very helpful. There we go. Um, so you can see here that my uh, I, I can see my my both my production and my staging environments um, in the different namespaces, and you can also see the revision here. Um, so Helm keeps its own, uh, I guess, state of, of releases, and I can go and roll back uh, revisions within there as well. So I'm defining the, the release name and, and, and the server host in environment variables that I'm then using in the in the set tag. So for the production deployment, it's basically the same thing. Um, and I'm just changing those environment variables. And then the one I skipped over here is the manual verification. Again, it's just uh, using Jenkins uh, input field. And that's all I have. Um, so the Helm community, every time I create this slide, that number goes up as well. There's over 187 contributors now. Helm 2.6.1 was released last week. And uh, if you want to get involved, there's a Slack channel, so check out Helm users. There's also Helm dev if you're interested in what's going on in the development world of Helm. 
Um, there's also a charts channel now. If you're interested in the Kubernetes charts repository, that's a place to go and um, get your questions and answers there. Um, we have public dev meetings every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. our time. Um, those are for Helm, and there's a 7 p.m. one uh, for charts as well. And finally, um, every project in the Kubernetes world is under a uh, special interest group. Helm falls under the uh, SIG apps group, and we meet on Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so come by and and uh, find out about all the applications. Uh, sorry, all the projects around applications on Kubernetes. Thank you.